Think Tech Hawaii. Civil engagement lives here. Aloha, welcome to Condo Insider. You know, I've said before, about 38% of our population lives in an association, whether it be a homeowner, condominium, co-op, plan unit development. And this show, is its purpose is to try, try to educate board members and owners on what it's like to be in an association, what the challenges are, what the important issues are, because owners have responsibilities in addition to the board through your governing documents. And as you know, in the last couple of months, we've had quite a number of perils that have affected associations. We've had a major fire, we've had lava, we've had flooding. All of these things are major problems for associations and major costs, but homeowners are not left unscathed as they have responsibilities. So I thought we'd have a little review today. I invited a really good friend of mine, Sherilyn Tanaka. Welcome. Thank you. She's Vice President of Atlas Insurance to specifically talk about insurance that homeowners and tenants should have, and maybe if we have time, we'll talk a little bit about some of the challenges the industry faces today. But welcome to the show, Sherilyn. Nice you. to see you. Thank I you. I know I saw you at the CAI Legislative yes. Action Seminar. Yes, and you did wonderful. Oh, I wish I owe you. <laughs> I know. <laughs> You know, did you think the seminar was worthwhile? I did, I did. You know, we had a seminar talking about all the new legislation this year and all the uh, exciting new challenges we have because of that. But you're in the insurance business. Tell us a little bit about yourself. Well, I've been in the industry now for 15 years. I came out of straight out of college from UH. Very thankful. The best industry to me, in my opinion, um, I'm very thankful every day for being in insurance because everybody needs it and I get to educate everyone every day about why they should have insurance and the coverage and the limits that they should have. And you work for Atlas Insurance. Did you always work for Atlas? Is that where you started? or? No, I've been with Atlas now for 10 years. Uh, prior to Atlas, I worked at Geico Insurance, the the gecko. So I did auto insurance and homeowners, uh, personal lines policies there, and then I came over to Atlas Insurance. And tell us about Atlas. Is it a big company, small company? Do they do a lot of insurance? Or? Yes, so Atlas is the largest insurance agency in Hawaii, and we do everything pretty much. We have a large personal lines um, group that helps owners, individual unit owners, homeowners, personal auto, umbrella. Basically if you own it personally they can help you. Um, we also have a, a large AOAO unit that insures a, a lot of condominiums, master associations, um, homeowner associations, sub associations, uh, and then we also have you know employee benefits, we have uh, construction, surety, um, we have a, a large risk consulting uh, group that also helps us and we also have in-house claims consultants that really helps us advocate for our clients because we, we work very hard to partner with our clients to help them. About how many employees does Atlas have? We have 106 employees now. On We have two offices on Oahu, one on Maui, one in Kona, one in Hilo, and we have one person on Kauai. Wow, a big company. <laughs> yes. I don't want to spend a lot of time on association shares. I want to talk about the homeowners who sometimes are left holding a bag because they haven't thought this through, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. But just briefly review generally the types of policies and association must have pursuant to the law? So according to the 514B, the, the policies that they would need are the property policies. Uh, ordinance and law is also a requirement under the 514B. Um, a lot of times what would be helpful for the boards is if they read their, their bylaws, their declarations, it will tell sometimes what types of policies that that board should be purchasing, such as flood. Um, if the property is in a flood zone, flood would be a, a requirement set by the declaration. Also general liability would be a requirement by 514B. Uh, there should be directors and officers a policy that covers the board. This would be previous current board and um, volunteers. Also um, 
they should be purchasing. If they have uh, employees that they they manage, they should purchase workers' comp policy. That That's a requirement by the state. Um, also, if there's uh, autos, they should be purchasing a commercial auto policy. They should also look at hired and non-owned auto. If, uh, you know, a board member or a resident manager or a building manager is doing business on, on behalf of the association, there should be coverage for that. So those are typical policies. Yeah, I think also, because there's a lot of policies, but there's also the fidelity bond or crime yes. policy, which, which protects for the association against employee theft. Correct, you know? yes. You know, from your experience, because I know that boards every year, they renew the policies, they pay the premium. Do you think they spend enough time talking to their agent about what the coverages are or are not? And are they really covered for the right amount? Or are they just looking for cheap? A lot of times it's looking for the cheap, because um, as a board, you know, I'm sure that they're looking at the bottom dollar, they're looking at the bottom line, making sure they're doing their duty to save the association as much money as possible. Sometimes looking at all the coverage is what is needed by the association to do their fiduciary responsibility, they should be looking at the coverage, making sure the policies that they currently have are the correct policies. If they had the same type of policy for years and years and years, um, they may have outgrown the policy since they originally purchased it maybe 10, 15, 20 years ago. And that should be a discussion that, you know, as a board, they should have, and also with their insurance agent. You know, work with the insurance agent because all the agent wants to do is help the board make the best decision that they can for the association. Well, the one term I know you're familiar with is called co-insurance, where they don't insure the property for the right value. Correct. And that's a problem. That is and a problem. And if you can explain to our listening audience why that's a problem, what coinsurance is and, and why it's a problem and why boards should look at their insured values. Sure. So actually under the 514B, it is a requirement to insure your building for the full replacement value. So that would be the full replacement value to um, rebuild it brand new at today's construction prices. And so what happens is if those values have not been looked at in years, it, there could be an underinsurance problem. And so the coinsurance says you need to insure it at a certain amount. So let's say it, it's supposed to be insured at a million dollars, but you choose to insure it at 500,000. There's a coinsurance penalty that, say, that states if you insure it less than 90% of the total value, you're going to result in a in a penalty, and so um, what happens is at the time of the loss is when you find out if you're insured at the right value or not. And so, if you insured it, let's say for fifty percent of the value, mm -hmm. probably they're going to pay only fifty percent of the claim. Yes, because you didn't insure it for the right amount of Correct. money. Correct. Right. Which. It's fair because insurance companies are taking the risk, mm -hmm. and so you shouldn't be able to take advantage of them by insuring for a low value and expecting to be paid at a high value. Correct. Price, for better words. Right. Right. Exactly. But you know, we saw in the, uh, a lot of publicity in the paper after the recent fire uh, in one of our high rises about people and insurance and the problems they face. Mm -hmm. So. Should an owner have his own insurance policy? And what, what kind of policy is it? So an owner should purchase their own individual policy. And it's called an HO6 policy. Um, typically, most owners have an HO6 policy. And what this covers is the interior of the unit. Because the master policy is going to cover the structure. But the interior of the unit is owned by a unit owner. And there could be renovations, changes, improvements that have been made because the master policy is only gonna cover what was originally as built, originally conveyed at the time of construction. If this new unit owner that comes in is now the fourth, fifth, or sixth owner, there could have been a lot of changes that have been made to the unit and that's what the unit owner needs to ensure is for those upgrades, those renovations that were done. 
if the original conveyance was a carpet on the floor, and now when you go in, there's hardwood floors. The Master Association policy is only going to cover for a cost of the carpet. Brand new carpet, but a carpet. And what the HO6 policy does is it looks at the value of the carpet, it looks at the value of the hardwood floors, and it'll give you that extra amount so that you can get those hardwood floors again. I assume it covers their personal contests, like their TV and their furniture yes. and, and uh, their personal belongings, although uh, jewelry might be a, 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 a special a, a, limit, a, a yes. special limit yes. or, and or a special endorsement, mm -hmm. you know, for the policy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, you know, the things we saw from this fire were, number one, people were saying, well, I can't live here anymore. I want to go rent someplace else. Is that covered under the HO6? If they're... So under the HO6 policy, there is a coverage called coverage D, loss of use. And what that gives you is uh, coverage to live somewhere else if your home is deemed unlivable due to a covered loss. So a covered loss would be something like a fire. And that would pay for a rental to live elsewhere at another uh, hotel or if you needed to you know, rent an apartment. Um, some policies have a time frame. So some policies say it'll pay whatever the amount is up to 12 months. Other policies have a dollar limit. And so some of those policies could have been only 12,000, you know, 20,000, so once that is depleted, there's no longer any more coverage because you've maxed it out. Now, is that something they can say, I want to buy more coverage for loss of use? Some policies you can purchase more. Some policies it's you, there's, um, you cannot. But that's something that you know the agent can help the insured with. If that's something that's very important to them, um, which it should be because you just never know what can happen and you want to make sure that you you as a um, As a prudent owner knows everything about your policy. So at the time of the loss, you know what to expect You don't want to have surprises at the time of loss. Well, I know from the one uh, Fire we had there were an awful lot of people who had loss of use, but it was very minimal amounts of money that would maybe cover them for two or three months mm -hmm. but really on a major fire or major peril, uh, you might be out of your home for a year or more. Yes, which is something that, you know, a lot of people, when you're purchasing the policy, you're not thinking of the worst. You're not thinking of the unexpected. You're thinking of, okay, just get me the appropriate coverage at the best price. I don't want anything more because I cannot foresee, you know, something like a huge fire. And one more question before we break. So that's for an owner-occupant. How about a person who rents their space out, let's say a long-term rental? Mm -hmm. um, can they get loss of income? Yes, they can. It is a, a special, uh, what we call an endorsement or addition onto, on the policy. They can purchase that at an additional cost that is available. Just talk to the agent and they'll help them. But again, it's going to be if, if they only bought... If they're renting it out for a thousand a month, they only bought a thousand dollars of the coverage. Yes, they're covered for one month. It's not a bottomless pit, you know, right? Get, it's it, a it, certain it, dollar limit. So yes. So they're gonna then setting the limit is identifying how much risk they're gonna. Yeah. Have. So one of the questions that we do ask is how much are you renting out this unit per month? And typically, what we'll do is, in the past, you know, this Marco Polo fire has pretty much been unprecedented is we'll times that amount by 12 because typically you know if, if a fire did happen not as big as Marco Polo that's how long we would estimate that someone would be out of their home for. So if you estimated 2000 a month for 12 months you bought 24000 in coverage. Correct. Once that's used up you're on your own. Yes. So yes. you have to think about it really carefully. Yes you do. You okay. Do. We're going to take a short break but I have a lot more questions for you. You're, you're going to get an A plus for your past <laughs> you know all the answers, so we'll be right back after this break. Hey, hey, baby, that's you. I want to know, will you watch my show? I hope you do. It's on Tuesdays at 1 o'clock, and it's out of the comfort zone, and I'll be your host, R.B. Kelly. See you there. I'm getting older. Do I need to worry about falling? 
Yes, you do. Each year, one in four people 65 and older will experience a fall, and many will be serious. The majority of falls happen at home, so remove things that could make you trip and install handrails to keep you steady. To learn more about the steps you can take to help prevent a fall, please talk to your doctor. You can also visit aarpfoundation.org or medicaremadeclear.com slash falls. This message was brought to you by United Healthcare and AARP Foundation. Well, that last commercial was telltaling. I'm over 65. That means I have a one in four chance of falling. And so and I, I hope I don't do it today anyway. Me too. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, we were talking about the loss of rental income and long-term rental. Well, how about vacation rentals? You know, I happen to own a vacation rental, and I, the, the income varies. Does an HO6 cover vacation rental loss of income? Some HO6s, so make sure, I hope that you have a great agent that knows about the vacation rentals. Uh, make sure that the insurance carrier knows that it, it is a vacation rental. But as far as the loss of income and you get the appropriate HO6 policy, there would be coverage for the what we call the fair rental value. And, yeah. and there's coverage for that. And the reason I brought that up was after the fire, mm -hmm. I decided to take a careful look at my policies only to learn that I was underinsured for everything because I was just looking for the, the, the and I'm not sure whether the agents just give you the, the, the base quote and, then, and you have to ask them or what, but uh, my policies, and I have two vacation rentals, did not cover vacation rental loss of income. It did cover long-term mm -hmm. loss of rental income. Mm -hmm. So I had to go through the effort of rechanging my policies to make sure I was protected because what we think we're covered for, and that was evident in Marco Polo Fire. Yes. People thought they had all these coverages and yes. insurance, and, and they really didn't. Mm -hmm. And it's important probably to review your policy and what your life's all about and make sure you've insured for the, for the real risk with it respect is. to that. It is. So, so you have the HO6 policy. A common thing that's happened, and I'm gonna say in the last 10 years, might be longer or shorter, is that 514B allows the condo association to be able to assess you for the deductible. Mm -hmm. It may be assessed you because your unit caused the problem. Mm -hmm. Maybe three or four units were involved in this. They just decided to assess it to the three or four units that, right. that, that were the benefit of the mm -hmm. policy. And these deductibles have risen to five, ten, twenty thousand mm -hmm. dollars because it's cheaper to insure for the association and pass that responsibility on to the homeowner through the HO6 Correct. than to buy it themselves. Correct. So, what's your take on the deductible issue? Is that a separate endorsement? You have to tell it. Is it automatic or? So the HO6 policy, there there is coverage for a deductible. However. The unit owner needs to have a conversation with the insurance agent. And one of the things that, you know, they should do and the insurance agent should do and what they should do together is figure out what the AOAO deductible is. And stay on top of that deductible each year when the policy renews, the master policy renews. So each year, I live in an association, I get a copy of my insurance summary each year, and I take a look at what the AOAO deductible is. And if I see that it's changed, and the associations also will send a letter to each unit owner if the deductible has changed to make them aware so that way they can have a conversation with their insurance agent. Now, different policies handle the assessment or the deductible differently. Um, it also could depend on the type of loss that occurred it is how the deductible would be handled. Some insurance companies will cover the, um, the AOAO deductible under a coverage called loss assessment. There are some companies that may cover it under the coverage A dwelling limit. And there's other companies that could cover the deductible under the personal liability limit. So there's so many variances between insurance companies and between policies that it's just so important for the consumer, the unit owner, to have a conversation with their agent. Let their agent um, guide them in, in determining the best way to cover themselves. Let's just assume you had a hurricane and the association, because they, they, they have their coverage, but because of various reasons, 
they need extra money to repair the units or to repair mm -hmm. the project. Mm -hmm. And so they want to assess everybody $20,000 mm -hmm. just for other items in the common areas because the costs are higher, or they want to take an opportunity to uh, fix something else, whatever it may be. Does the loss assessment cover that as a potential assessment by the owners, not just for the deductible, but on some other matter? No. So the true definition of a loss assessment is a one-time assessment fee. And that, that pays if every single unit owner is assessed that fee due to a covered loss. So improvements would not be a covered loss under the insurance policy. Um, in the past, before the 514B and before the AOAO deductible came into play, um, what the loss assessment paid for would have been, for example, if um, there was a, a pool accident, maybe someone drowned in the pool and the family sued the association. And that type of situation is where the AOAO could assess each unit owner a one-time assessment fee to pay for that. That's truly what that loss assessment coverage was for in the past. Today it has changed and it has evolved a lot because of the 514B and the insurance carriers had to, you know, help the consumer in covering the AOAO deductible. That's why there's so many variances on how they cover One it. One size does not fit all, I yes, guess. Yes, yes. One size does not fit all. Let me just tell you a brief story about a person I had to talk to last week. They had a claim, and they wanted to come in from Florida and supervise the claim of their condominium that had the fire. So they submitted to the association, the cost of their airfare, the cost for their hotel, the cost of their meals, oh. for them to come here to assist in the administration of the claim, saying submit it to the association's insurance. Oh. Is that covered? No. That wouldn't be something that's covered. And also, the AOAO policy, the purpose of that policy is not to pay for you as an individual unit owner to live somewhere else. That's why you would have an HO6 policy. However, the HO6 policy would also not pay for the airfare or you know, for something like that. Um, the HO6 policy, because I'm assuming they rent out this unit, the HO6 policy is really going to pay for the loss of income that they're losing because they're not able to rent it out. Um, if that was their primary location and that's where they lived, then the HO6 policy will pay for them to stay at a hotel room. But because it wasn't their primary location, um, really the purpose of the policy is to pay for the loss yeah. of rental. In this case, it was a second home. They didn't oh, rent okay. it out. Okay. But they didn't live there either. Yes. yes. And they wanted to come and personally be engaged, which is they're welcome to come. Yeah. I just don't think the insurance company is going to pay for it. No. Yeah. Not for their airfare. No, to come. But they should, you know, that's that's a situation they should have with their individual, you know, homeowner policy carrier and the agent. You know, help let the agent help them and figure out a way. Because you just, if you have an advocate on your side, that's the best thing you can ask for. Well, in our well-known fire, we're down to a couple minutes left, so we'll, we'll try to do this and uh, give them enough information to our listeners of what's going on. Well, how about the tennis? They don't have insurance. How do, what do they do? What kind of policy do they get? So a tenant should get a what we call an HO4, and this is known as a tenant policy. And the tenant policy covers their personal belongings. That's primarily what a tenant would purchase this policy for. The policy would also cover, though, their loss of use. And so if that tenant could not live in the home because of a covered loss, like a fire, that policy, that tenant policy, will pay for them to live in a hotel room, or if they have to move out per permanently, um, or you know, for a longer period of time, that's what the the policy will cover is for that, for their added expense now to live somewhere else. So to be clear, if I'm hearing you correctly, the owner's HO6 policy is not going to pay for the loss of use of Correct. the tenant. The tenant needs to buy their own HO4 policy. Correct, yes. Yes, the HO6 policy is for the owner, not for a tenant. It cannot transfer, you cannot give it to them. You can't, the HO6 is for the owner. The tenant has their responsibility to purchase their own policy. Assuming averages real quick. Mm -hmm. Wild guess, what's the average HO4 policy cost for a tenant? Oh. 
two hundred dollars a year, two. if that. And how about an HO6 policy for now? Uh, HO6 policy would probably be about three hundred dollars a year. It's interesting because I had to redo all my insurance because I have long-term rentals, all the rest of it. It worked out to about three fifty per property mm -hmm. for me to insure it to the limits I need to cover the lost income, to cover the assessment, to cover everything. Where before I was paying like two fifty, mm -hmm. it didn't increase the premiums on an annual basis by more than about a hundred dollars a year yeah. to get the right coverage. Mm -hmm. And I guess landlords should be telling their tenants or requiring the lease yeah. that they have an HO four policy mm -hmm. to protect themselves. Correct. Because what I've learned that a course I took talked about when there's a problem. 55% of us blame someone else. Yes. 33% deny it as a problem, and 12% take responsibility. And I'm sure all those tenants are going to say to the owner of the association, you have to pay. Yes. And there's not going to be insurance coverage. Correct, yes. And, and that's why they should purchase their own policy. So we're down to our last minute or so. What's your final thoughts? My final thought is to talk to your agent. <laughs> you know, as a consumer, insurance is not the easiest concept to understand. And it's ever-changing with all the laws that come into play with, you know, especially now Bill 69 is happening. There's things that are happening in the marketplace and needs as an owner change. And so as an insurance agent, we want to educate. We want to help the consumer make the best decision for them so that at the time of the loss they're not surprised you know it's it's unfortunate because when there is a huge loss that is a reminder for a lot of people to look at their own policies like you did you looked at your own insurance policies made sure so today you're better aware of what coverage you have so if something did happen nothing's gonna happen but if something did you know what to expect well as an industry veteran I should have known better but I didn't I think that's a message to everybody out there that you need to take a look at your personal insurance policies for you know, your home as well as any investment property you have and make sure you've looked at all the little parts of it, what you're buying and not buying, because you may not be covered adequately for some of your insured. I'm sure anybody watching this show, besides talking to their own agent, they had questions they could call you as, as well, I'm sure. Yes. So I want to thank all of you for watching Condo Insider this week. We hope you learned something about the owner's policy, the tenant's policy, and the differences between what the association is going to cover. And we hope you tune in next Thursday, 3 o'clock, for another edition of Condo Insider. Aloha.